Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to open websites, documents, folders, and your email client, and lots more, using the follow hyperlink command in Microsoft Access. Okay, so I've got another video called Hyperlink Fields where I go through the theory of why I don't like Access's built-in hyperlink data type. I hate it. I think it, it's awful, and I don't use it. And about 20 minutes into this video, I show you my method, which is to simply store hyperlink data as a text field, and then we make little buttons that we can use to launch those things, like your email program, a web page, a file on your drive, etc. So the purpose of this fast tip video is to just show you this part here without having to make you watch all the other theory stuff if you don't care about all that stuff. So that's the point of the fast tips is to get you the tip fast. And then if you want afterwards, I'll show you some extra cool stuff. I know some of the fast tips go like 30, 40 minutes, but I show you the stuff quickly and then we do other fun stuff afterwards. So let's get to it. Before we get started, though, there are some actual prerequisite videos. If you've never done any VBA programming before, you're going to need a couple lines of code. Just one. One command will launch the, the hyperlink, but you got to know where to put it. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this. It's free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. You also need to know about string concatenation. That's putting two strings together to make one. But watch that if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to, but you can use any database you want for this example. Now, in my customer form, I've got an email address, but I've saved it as plain text. I did not use the hyperlink field. Why? Go see that other video. But let's say we want to store a, an email address, their web page, maybe a file on the hard drive, like the resume. Okay, let's say we're doing HR or whatever. You want to store a link to their resume so you can just click and it'll open up in Word or a PDF or whatever it is. Okay, and then one more. We'll do a folder location. Maybe you've got um, a whole bunch of their documents are stored in a specific folder for each customer. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is add fields to our table to store all that data. So we're going to come in here. We're going to go to the customer table, design view. All right, here's our email. Again, it's just short text, right? Let's come down here. We'll put in website, again, short text, right? Resume file. And if you've got lots of different files that you want to store, you could do a whole separate table with a list of all the documents. I do that in my ABCD videos. ABCD part five has got a whole document management system built into it. So if you're curious and you want to learn more about this, click on the link. But for the example today, let's say, you know, this is an HR database. Really all I care about is their resume. That's all. Um, and finally, we'll do a uh, customer folder location. Okay, now it's important that we have a distinction to know what we're opening because you have to put different prefixes on for a web page and for a mail location. If not, it will just open up in Explorer. So let's see how this works in the form. Close this, save changes, yes. Let's go back to our customer form and I'm going to put all of these together. Let's take email and slide it down here. We'll put all the links together just for the class. All right, make it look pretty. Okay, here's their email. And I'm going to slide this in like that because we're going to put a little button here. Okay, I'm just going to copy one of these other buttons. Copy, paste, control C, control V. I'm going to slide that over here. And I'm going to make this say open. All right, we'll put a little image in it in a minute. All right, open. Now. We're going to open up the properties. We're going to go to the All tab, change this to my Open Email button. Okay, right-click, Build Event. That'll open up your code editor. Here we are in my VBA editor, right inside Open Email button. Click. We don't need the Project Explorer for this lesson, so let's get rid of that. And I'll slide this over just a bit. I like to keep this here so I can see everything. Okay, the command you need to follow a hyperlink is applic dot follow hyperlink now in older versions of access you do have to have the application if you've got i think 2013 or 16 don't quote me just follow hyperlink by itself works just fine you don't need the application dot it's assumed okay when you press space you get a whole bunch of parameters really the only one i ever use is the first one all the rest of them are optional 
I will be covering all of the rest of these parameters in a future video for my members in an extended cut. But for today, we're just going to worry about address. So what's this address thing? Well, normally I just want to follow what the field is. So normally I would just put email here. But there are two things you have to remember. If you are following an email address, you have to start it off with mail to colon. So since this is an email field, we have to put in here mail to colon and then a little string concatenation and then the email address. That will tell Windows, right, when, when, when the follow hyperlink is activated, that tells Windows, use whatever your mail to client is and open up this to send email. That could be your web browser. Like me, I use Gmail. So for me, it's going to open up my web browser. And I got a whole separate video on how to make Gmail your default web browser, if that's what you want to do. Um, if you're using Outlook, it'll open Outlook. It'll open whatever, whatever your email client is. Okay, so save that. All right, come back over here. We're going to close this and reopen it. Always close and reopen your stuff, people. Always. Ready? Hit open. Click. And it opened up on a different screen. Let me move it. And there it is. My web browser opened up. It started Gmail with a send, right? And now I can put in the subject. Well, I'll show you how to automate that subject in just a minute too. And there you go. And then you can just type in your stuff and hit send, and then you're done. All right, I can close that. So that's email. More with email in just a few minutes. Like I said, the fast steps, I get to it as fast as I can, but that doesn't mean we can't have some fun at the end of class. Let me resize this just a bit. We're going to replace that with a picture, but for now, just make it smaller. Okay, let's do... The next one, the web page. So, copy, paste. And we're going to change this guy. We're going to have a website here. Open you up. And we're going to go to the All tab. The control source is now website. And, of course, if you change your control source, always change the name as well. Okay, this guy, what do we call this one? Open email button. We'll call this one open web button. Open web button. Okay. All right. Same thing. Right click, build event. Now, for this one, we're going to say follow hyperlink website. Okay. A couple things we'll talk about in a second, though. Hold on. So save that. Come back out here. Close it. Open it up. Now, I'm going to type in here http colon slash slash 599cd.com. That's my website. Why it's 599CD, a whole long story. I got a whole web page on it on my, on my site. Ready? Hit open. And boom. There you go. It opens up in your browser. Now, that HTTP or HTTPS stuff in the beginning is important. Okay? Let me close this. Now, nine times out of ten, if you're copying and pasting that from your browser, it'll bring that along with it. So I like to leave that there. If the user doesn't put that in there, you've got a couple options. You can either change it here. So if they just type in 599cd.com, then you can add that. But if you've got a whole bunch of web page addresses in there already, you might not want to mess with it. You might want to just check for it when you click the open button. So let's say, for example, I got a bunch of web page addresses without that prefix on it. Okay, this is some bonus material, folks. This is this little bit bonus stuff here. All right, a little bonus action. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to say right here. Now, you can, you can change that website if you want to, or you can just add it to a variable and then send that. It's totally up to you. I'm going to add it to a temporary variable. I, wanna actually, I don't want to actually change what's in the table. So we're going to say dim w as a string for the website, right? W, now we're going to say if left of website, comma, how many characters? What do we got here? We got uh, HTTP colon slash slash. That's seven, right? If it equals HTTP colon slash slash or left of website, comma, eight equals HTTPS colon slash slash. Could be either one of those, regular or secure, right? Then... If those conditions are true, then we're going to say W equals website just by itself. Otherwise, we got to add the prefix onto it. Now, we'll just assume the regular prefix, right? W equals HTTP colon slash slash and website. Okay, so we're just going to add regular HTTP on the beginning of it. Are there other prefixes? Yeah, there's a bunch of them. There's FTP and lots of a Skype. There's lots of other stuff, but we're just covering the basics today. 
could you just check the left four characters for HTTP? Yeah, you could. But then you run into what if their their website is actually HTTP.com or HTTPtraining.com or something. So you want to check for this whole thing. Okay. All right. So now you're ready. Here we go. Run it. And, oh, can't open the specified file. Hold on. Debug. What do we got? Website is what? Just 599cd.com. Hold on a second. There's a goof there. Anybody see it? Anybody see what the goof is? And again, I like to leave my mistakes in the video because if I make this mistake, chances are you're going to make this mistake. Okay? So, stop the code. What did I do? Well, I sent website instead of W, the variable I just declared. I do that a lot. I do it all the time. So, be aware of that. And then I sit here for an hour scratching my head like, why isn't it working? Okay. Make sure you get the right variable that you're sending there. Ready? Open. And, and again, it opens up on a different browser. There it is right there. Okay. Okay. Now, file locations. These are easy. You can do files or folder locations. All right, so I'm going to copy this stuff again. Copy, paste. All right, and let's say this is going to be their resume. Their resume. <laughs> right? All right, resume. Copy, paste. This is going to be the open resume button. Okay, and we're going to right-click, build event. Now, for file types, we're just going to follow the hyperlink. Follow hyperlink. Follow the yellow brick hyperlink. And this is going to be resume file is the field name. Nothing new to add to it. Nothing you got to put as a prefix. We don't have to tell Windows what to do. It'll look at the file extension, and that's how it knows what to open. So, all you got to put in here is a valid file name. So I got other videos where I teach you how to click to browse for a file. That's covered in the extended cut of my images video. Extended cut, because it's a little bit more advanced, so it's, uh, it's for the members. But if you're interested in learning how to do that, there's the video for you. Okay, but for now, I'm going to type in the full path to where my file is. If it's in the database folder, you can just type in the file name. All right, but usually we don't leave files just roaming around in our database folder, so give it a full path. So in my case, it's g colon backslash, yes, I use Google Drive, g colon backslash my drive backslash I've got resume.pdf. Okay, now let's click open and see what happens. And boom, there it is. Windows knew to open a PDF file in my browser. Okay, if you got Acrobat, it'll use Acrobat. Okay, and it just looks at that file extension to know what type to open. And yeah, that's my resume. Okay, you don't like it? Too bad. <laughs> all right, if this is a doc file, a Word document file, all right, I've got another file in here called uh, resume.docx. That's how I made the PDF file. Ready? Open. And it launches Microsoft Word because it knows docx files get open in Word. You could do it with PowerPoint slides. You could do it with Excel files. You could do it with text documents, whatever you want. Follow hyperlink, we'll follow it if it's a file. If it's just a folder, okay. Oh, we got another we got another one for that, right? We've got uh, the customer folder. So let's copy it. We'll do one more. I keep copying it and then unselecting it and then reselecting it. All right, so let's put in here their customer folder. You can set up a separate folder for each customer if you want to. All right, this will be now instead of the resume file, we'll point that to the customer folder. And yes, I've got other videos where I show you how to make automated customer folders, like in that uh, ABCD5, where every document that you add goes in a folder under the customer's folder, like based on their ID. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. Okay, save it. Oh, we got to put our code in here. Duh. We got to do open customer folder button, whatever you want to call it. All right, right click, build event. And again, same thing. We're just going to follow hyperlink, right? Follow hyperlink, customer folder and you could do checks to make sure this is a valid folder look for a backslash on the end all kinds of stuff you could do i'm just showing you the basics it's a fast tip <laughs> all right come back in here and again let's do uh g my drive and then i'll make a drive uh make a folder called rick like that okay and then we'll hit open and there it is it opened right up in file explorer okay want to make these buttons pretty Right, design view. I show this in the other video too, but it's really easy to do. Open these guys up. And we're going to say picture right here. Dot, dot, dot. And find what you want. For email, let's see if there's an email thing. It's been a while since I've done these. I think e envelope is what I used. Yeah. 
There's a bunch of other different ones, though. Oh, someone's beaming in. Hit OK. And there's your little email guy. See that? Right there. All right, website. There's like a globe, I think. Uh, what did I use? The globe? I don't use these often. I'm not teaching this stuff. I don't use it myself. I like text on buttons. It's a world. World. Anyway, that should make one that's called globe, too. Why? Come on. That'd be so difficult. All right. Uh, for a resume file, use a, there's probably a document one in there somewhere. Let's see what they got. Address book would work. Access form looks pretty good. There is an MS Word icon if you're sure it's always a Word document. There's PDF or XPS. I don't really care for that one. Yeah, I'll just stick with Word document for now. You can browse and pick your own if you want to, but I usually use the built-in ones because I'm not that fancy. And like I said, I don't usually personally use pictures that often. All right, customer folder is pretty easy. There is an open folder one, I believe. Where is it? I just saw you. Where are you? There you are. Open folder. Pretty good. All right. There you go. Save that. Close it. Close it. Open it back up again. Want their folder? Click. There's the folder. And no, you don't have much control over the size. It's pretty much going to pop up at the last size it was at. All right. Web page, email, Word document, or PDF, or whatever. All right, uh, you want you want a little you want a little bonus material, a little a little sum sum, a little sum sum on the side, more bonus, more bonus. We got more bonus. This is technically a double bonus. I used to make a little double bonus thing, but I'm not gonna do that today. You can actually supply parameters for email if you're using a client that supports it. Not all of them do. For example, I use Gmail, so you can use these parameters. Come into your code, find the email button right here. All right, so you're going to send the email address itself and tack on the end of that question mark subject equals uh, greetings like that. Okay, or whatever you want for the subject. And then hit go. And look at that. Greetings goes right in the subject line. You can customize that for whatever you want. Right. You can add other stuff like a CC, a BCC. You can put the body in here if you really want to. I don't recommend it, but you can. Right? You put an ampersand for the next parameter. That goes inside the string. You're doing string concatenation in what's called the URL, the query string of the URL. So in other words, you're not doing it out here, which is the access string. You're doing it inside this string. So you could say CC equals, you know, Rick at 599CD.com. Okay, now when I click it, it always opens up in a different window, and I'm going to drag it over here. See? There's the CC. Isn't that? Yeah? Isn't that cute? Okay. You can put the body in here if you want to. Let's try it. I honestly have not tried this in a while, so I don't remember. Let's put and body equals, and then we'll do a little concatenation here. Uh, this is to remind you that you are overdue. I don't know. Whatever. Now, don't get too crazy with this because I'm not sure how many characters this allows. I, I, it might be like a thousand. I'm not sure. I wouldn't use this for big long things. I've got better videos to teach you how to send email like this. All right? This video here, send Outlook email. We'll, we'll use your Outlook client. You can send them automatically. And this you can make pretty good emails with. I've got another one, my email seminar, that shows you how to automate mass email through like, you know, you, you can use Gmail for that too. This I would only use if you want to like pre-populate some stuff that you are like always typing constantly. And you don't want to put it in your like your signature or something. Let's see if this works. I'm not even sure if it will. Oh yeah, it did work. But I do notice though that if you put a body in here, it it gets rid of your signature. I like my Gmail signature, so I probably wouldn't use that. I would use this for like you want to fire off a quick personal email. I honestly would not use that to populate the body. So the subject, if you want, sure, right? Maybe a CC if you want to make sure that your coworker, who's ever on the team, whatever, always gets a copy. You could use BCC in here as well. Okay, but I wouldn't use that for, like, anything serious. Where'd it go? Okay, boom, there it is. Signature's back. <laughs> All right. There's lots more to learn, folks. I cover a lot more with Follow Hyperlink in my Access Developer 39 class, pretty advanced class. It also covers things like Microsoft Word automation and things like that, but, but I do a lot with follow, follow Hyperlink in here, too. And there, I clean that all up nice and pretty for the cover photo that I have yet to shoot, which is coming right now. And there it is. See, sometimes I make the sometimes I make the title slide after the video, unless I run through it ahead of time. Sometimes I do that, and then I take that one. But it depends. Depends on how I'm feeling that day. But there you go. 
There's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.